Morning, good morning. God bless you, family. God, welcome to the Morning Devo with your brother, DJ Sam Rock. I bless you all in the name of Jesus. I thank you for being with me. It's Friday. A lot of people say Friday, but Fridays are different. Um, the whole world has changed. Friday and the weekend, to me at least, has changed dramatically. Drastic changes for the weekend because usually it'll be, oh, we're going to go here, we're going to go there, we're going to maybe pop in the movie theater, whatever. Although things are starting to open up, although things are starting to look brighter on this side of things, it's still not the same. And people say, oh, we're never going to go back to normal. I think we don't have to go back to normal, but I think everything will go back to normal, fortunately or unfortunately. To some, that might be a good idea. To others, that might be a horrible idea. But people are looking for wealth. They're looking for treasure. They're looking for, you know, acceptance. They're looking for love. They're looking to be valued. They're looking to be, uh, they're looking to belong. Amen. And all those things God provides through Christ. So we're going to talk about this morning the worth of knowing Jesus. The worth of knowing Christ. It is so worth knowing the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is so worth it. And there is a hidden treasure, and it's his word. In his word, there's hidden treasure. People are looking for ways to make money online. And I have um, some online businesses, an online radio network. I do most, like 85% of my businesses online. And I make most of my money online. Amen. And... People are out there looking for ways to increase their wealth. And also, I do health and wellness. So, shout out to, uh, where is it? Herbalife. Amen. It's crazy how this camera works. My right is my left, I guess. And my left is my right. Amen. So, we're going to be talking about it's worth knowing Christ. The worth of knowing Jesus. Amen. I believe if you get to know who the Lord is in your life, amen, you'll know the treasure is in the Lord. You'll know it. It'll be a no-brainer. It'll be something that you wake up and you will know automatically. You'll have the knower inside of you. And he'll give you wisdom. He'll give you understanding. He'll give you knowledge. He'll give you ways to gain wealth in your life. Right? And health and wealth, I believe they go together. I believe those two things are married. And I believe because they are married and Jesus is so worth knowing and worth getting involved in and with him and a relationship with him, then you'll have both. I believe that with all my heart, either on this side of eternity, definitely on the other side of eternity. But listen, God wants to use his children, amen, to glorify himself, right? So we need to testify of God's greatness, his goodness in our lives. And we need to walk on that water. Walk in faith towards the victorious goal that he has placed in front of us on this side. Today, start it now. Starting now, right? He wants us to do and move and be about his business. And the, the hidden treasure that I'm talking about, we're going to talk about that um, this morning on the Morning Devo. Fridays, I'm trying to dedicate Fridays to encourage you of ways of knowing your value in the kingdom of God. Knowing you are so worthwhile. You are so valuable to God. And God, because he values you, he wants us to learn how to value others and each other. Amen. Let me just shout out some people for some good mornings over here. Good morning, Brother Damien. God bless you, my brother. God bless you. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Sister Joyce, it's good to see you. God bless you. Good morning. Welcome to the Morning Devo. Sister Lissette, good morning to you as well. God bless you. God bless you. And yeah, it's all worth it. Knowing Jesus is so worth it. The world says it's corny. The world says that we're... We're crazy people for believing in the Lord Jesus, but we're not crazy. We're more sane. We're more sane than we, we've ever been in our lives after Jesus has cleansed our minds and changed us and renewed us and restored us and continues to build us up. Amen? Oh, Amen. So the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus on the Morning Devo with your brother Sam Rock. And listen, if you know somebody right now that will be blessed by this Morning Devo, but just say, wait, they're not on social. How am I going to connect? Send them to the website, soulwinnerswithaz.org, and it's right there on the front page. They could even listen audio. Shout out to all my podcast listeners. They could listen just audio. Maybe they're working out on a treadmill, doing the uh, spin cycle on the cycling on the bike, 
or maybe they're working or on their way to work, driving, whatever the case may be, is all good. They can listen in um, audio on the podcast. Amen. So I'm trying to cover all the bases here and a lot of moving parts. But amen. But it's all worth it. Why? Because I found a hidden treasure. I found the fountain of youth. I found the Lord. Amen. Through wherever he was always there. He found me. But I found a way to connect with him, I should say. Because I was the one that was lost. God is never lost. Amen. But the Bible does say that we should seek him with all our hearts. Seek him diligently and we will find him. Why? Because he's hidden. He, he's hidden. He's an invisible God, yet he makes himself visible in forms of people. He, he came in the form of a man. Amen. Jesus the Christ. And he is visible to those who are diligently seeking him. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God, right? And all of his righteousness and everything will be added on to us. Amen. I hope I didn't mess that scripture up, but I'm paraphrasing. I think it's Matthew 6.33 and I think that's one of our scriptures of the day. Amen. So let's move forward. Let's move forward. Let's pray. If you have any questions, comments, prayer requests or concerns, you know, I'll give you like 30 seconds to put it on in the very start. But don't feel free to chime in at any time. Amen. If you have a question um, about what we're saying or what we're doing, a comment, you know, you have a concern, prayer request all the time. I'm a praying man. I love to pray because I know the power of prayer. I know that prayer works. I know that God hears my prayers according to his will and purpose. Amen. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. Amen. Jesus prayed and he gave us a format of prayer. So I'm going to follow that format. I don't know about you, but Jesus already showed us and you know gave us an example of how to pray. And when I don't have anything to pray, when I don't know what to pray, Holy Spirit in me will pray. It's like a bird in here. I just heard a bird. That was amazing. Amen. And it sounded like it was right in this room. Uh, hopefully not, because then you're going to see me running around the studio like, no. <laughs> so let's pray. I don't see any comments or prayer requests. Let's give a, a time to pray. Amen. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that it is so worth knowing you, sovereign Lord and Savior. I pray, Lord God, for a hedge of protection over our minds, physically, emotionally, right? And that you, and spiritually, and that you, Lord God, will get the honor, worship, and praise today for this morning, Devo. I pray, Lord God, that you will show us where is the hidden treasure. And you remind us that this hidden treasure is found in us. The earthly vessels, right? The earthly vessels, you have poured your spirit into us. So that means we have everything we need to live out this life. Amen. Amen. And we have a prayer request for our eight-year-old princess, uh, Lizvet. Hasn't been doing well, well, been having stomach issues and lots of pains. In Jesus' name, I pray over uh, this eight-year-old, uh, Lizvet. in Jesus' name, that Lord God, you would touch this young one, touch her stomach and relieve her from the pains in Jesus name. I also pray that over my wife. She hasn't been feeling well, her stomach as well. I pray that all these stomach viruses or anything that's happening right now that's trying to attack our digestive system will be gone in Jesus name. And then we will give them glory, honor, worship and praise for the healing. And we receive it. We believe it. And we thank you for it right now in advance as we move forward today in victory not in defeat, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So let's take a minute. Let's share this out to as many people as comes to mind. Amen. And then we can move forward. When we come back, um, we'll get right into um, this whole idea of the worth of knowing Jesus right here in the Morning Devo. I'll be right back.
And here we go. That minute is incredibly, incredibly so fast. Amen. But I'll leave it at a minute because um, I don't want to, you know, pause for too long and then have people just like, what's going on here with this timer? Uh, a timer throws off a lot of people. A lot of timers um, really turn people off. And I understand that. So I try to keep that as short as possible. Amen. So every for the past couple of Fridays, we've been on this whole God answers prayers. God bless you uh, for approving my share. And over the past Fridays, we've been talking and on this theme of wealth, health, um, breakthrough financially, uh, our worth. And in general, on Fridays, which I like to do on my Fridays because a lot of people have paydays, right, on Fridays. Amen. Me, I'm self-employed, so my payday, I have to make that every day. <laughs> I have to make some sort of payday for myself every day and for my family. But, you know, you get the gist. But I realize that the thread has always attached itself or the thread is always in Jesus, knowing him. And how he operates, amen, and how he moves, and how he develops ways and systems for us to prosper because he wants our soul to prosper. We weren't designed to die, ladies and gentlemen. We were not meant to die, we were meant to live forever. But because of the fall of man, and that brought sickness, illness, disease, death into the equation, but it also created a need. Of for a redeemer, for a savior, and that need was met by Jesus. So there's no way that a believer in Christ will lose. We win all the time. We win all the time. So so over the past weeks, there's um, a lot of Bible that we've been talking about based upon this concept and this theme um, towards money and material wealth. And material wealth, we already discussed a couple of weeks ago, maybe it was last week, that that's not the um, be-all, end-all. That's not it. Material wealth comes and goes. But supernatural wealth never leaves. It never goes away. Amen? I believe that in, in eternity it increases in value because knowing Jesus is so much worth it. Amen? So it's clear that money itself is a blessing, and we all know that. It's a blessing. It's a good, excellent slave. It's horrible as a master. If you have money mastering you and you're always chasing after it, right? That means you are following the money. Listen, stop it. Stop following the money. Let the money follow you and start following the Lord Jesus Christ. Because wherever you follow the Lord, everything else will follow you. Everything that's good, everything that will lift you up, everything that will prosper you, everything that will give you health, everything that will give you um, value will follow you. Don't chase after the things of this world. Amen. If you're going to chase after anyone, chase after the Lord Jesus Christ. And I guarantee you, while you're running after him, amen, everything that's good will run after you. Uh, Jesus is a magnet to goodness, for goodness. Amen. Amen. And for wealth, for health, for prosperity. Amen. All life is found in the Lord. So it's clear that money itself is a blessing. And that we could be thankful for it. And I am grateful. And I am thankful for every single time that I have an opportunity to sow into someone's life. Sow into my family. Pay bills. Right. Um, to buy clothes. Or, or to shave my head. You know. I got to get new glasses. I have these glasses for years and years and years. Because I'm the type of person that if it's not broken, I won't change it. Amen. And, you know, I'm not into material possessions and getting this, that, and a third all the time. But every now and then, it'll be time. So thank you, Jesus, for even giving me the opportunity to think about purchasing anything at all. Why? Because I found the hidden treasure in him. And I don't worry about finances. I don't worry about bills. I don't worry about money. I have not worried about that since I was a teenager. Amen. And just that's the way God designed me. Some people worry about money, finances, about their health and all that. And it's understandable. Amen. But God doesn't really give us reasons to worry. As a matter of fact, he tells us not to worry. He says, pray about everything. Don't worry about everything. Pray about everything. Acknowledge Jesus in the situation. Because he is with us. And he will never fail us 
forsake us, abandon us, put us to shame, and leave us just broke, busted, and disgusted. Um, we were, we're not, and I'm going to repeat it, we weren't even created to die. Does it happen? Yes. And that was because of man. That was mankind's mess up, not God's mess up, because God does not mess up. So other things are more important than money. And you know that. You know that. You have family members. You have spouses. You have uh, people that you love are placed higher in value than any money or gold. You know, this scenario keeps on running in my mind that I'm going to be busy doing something and maybe I'll get a call or whatever and I'm going to have to lay down what I'm doing to go and address a need or to go to a loved one and be with them. Or it could happen the other way around. Somebody will probably be having to come to me. This scenario keeps on reminding my mind, or, you know, rewinding in my mind. I don't know why, but it's inevitable that things happen in life. Amen? So I got to be willing uh, instead of to... You know, stop one thing that's prospering me financially or whatever. Stop that thing completely. And I've done that when a pandemic hit. I had five online businesses. I closed them and went into the church um, volunteering for the church 100 percent, like almost like full time, uh, making sure we're up and running for the next stage of this whole online church. I stopped everything. My choice. And the blessing of that is that I was able to. Amen. I stopped those online things, but I had something else going on. Thanks be to the Lord Jesus, because I'm not worrying about anything. And because I believe because of that sacrifice that I made and that move that I made and that decision I made, God blessed me in other ways financially. Amen. And he'll do the same thing for you, too. It's not This is not the Sam show. It's not all about Sam Lopez. It's not all about Brother DJ Sam Rock. It's not about me. It's about what the kingdom of God is offering all of us. And uh, sometimes I'm like, don't they know or don't I know? Remind me, Lord, that the kingdom of God is full of prosperity. There is no lack in the kingdom of God. Right? There is no um, Dow Jones or, you know, trades and um, economy crashes or this, that, and a third, or cryptocurrency going down. Kingdom of God doesn't get involved in all of that. The kingdom of God is based off the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, and He has everything running smoothly. No hiccups in the kingdom. So other things are more important than money. Proverbs sixteen sixteen, for example, says that wisdom is better than gold. Knowing what God wants us to do is godly wisdom. And that is better than diamonds, pearls, gold, silver, money, currency, anything. Knowing the will of God in your life is worth more than any currency that this world can offer you. Or that or any relationship that you find yourself in, knowing God's will over that relationship is worth more. I'm seeing a a whole lot of um, relationships that are not designed by God. In other words, relationships that is based on emotion, is based on preference rather than based on truth. I see it going on. And I have to admit, the pictures and the life that I see them living, it looks lavish. It looks like uh, amazing. The pictures are amazing. The love looks like um, it's erotic love because it's not agape love for sure. It could be some sort of phileo love, but it's mostly erotic, erotic love. Um, that they're experiencing, and they it looks glamorous, and it looks this, that, and third. Then I snap out of it and say, wait a minute. That's not the life that I would ever want my daughters to live, that I would ever want anyone to live, because it's a false reality. It's not true, because it's going against the purpose and design of for their lives and for the relationship of love. I'm just saying. It's rap. It's all over, especially... Um, this whole social media thing is so dangerous because it paints. Because uh, I envision, what about if my six-year-old is looking through, you know, Facebook or whatever, and sees these relationships and it looks so like incredible, and then and he, she she looks at it as, oh, that's what I want, and that's how the enemies start working. Amen. So notice, I didn't tell you what kind of relationships I'm talking about, but the people who are filled with the Spirit realize exactly what I'm talking about. We see it all the time. It's right in front of our faces. 
And they too are looking for love, acceptance, and they're looking for wealth and increase and prosperity. We all are as human beings. I don't know no one that wakes up in the morning and says, I want to be broke. I want to be sick. I want to die. Some people are struggling with suicidal thoughts because the enemy is placing those thoughts and they're magnified in the minds of the people who are not, doesn't have any way to combat those thoughts. Don't know how to transfer those thoughts or don't know how to take those thoughts and put them into the obedience of Christ. So there's a war for souls right now. Amen. And it has to do with what we want most. Whatever I, whatever I want most is going to be attacked most. Whatever I need most is going to be attacked most. Amen. That goes for everyone. You want money, power, fame, that's going to be attacked most. Sometimes the fame and the money, probably you get it smoothly, smoothly when you're doing it your own way. When you're doing it the world's way, it seems like it all fits together. Why? Because there's a whole bunch of people rallying behind that type of way of getting things together. But it's not God's way. So the less friction you're feeling when it comes to those things, be careful. That might be an indicator of whose side you're on or who you're listening to or who you're following. Are you following after money or is money following after you? In the kingdom of God, for a born again believer, money follows after the believer. We don't follow or chase after the money. I'm telling you. Look at the scriptures. Look at the gospel. See how Jesus handled situations where Thousands of people were hungry, and he would tell his disciples, go feed them. And the first thing they would say, ah, we only got a couple of of dollars here, and there's no food to feed all those people. And he just said, give me what you have, and then you're going to see that you have more than enough because he is with him. He was with them. God was with them. Like, give me what you have and see. So I'm the type. When I saw those scriptures, I was like, okay. Whatever I have in my hand, whatever I have, I'm giving it all to God. And I'm telling you, that was the greatest decision I've ever made in my whole entire life. Giving what I thought was little, God turned that thing around to something huge. Amen? Huge. So, Proverbs 16, 16 says that wisdom is better than gold. Proverbs 21 and 1 states, a good name is to be chosen rather than great riches and favor is better than silver or gold, right? When you have a clear conscience, when you have um, the goodness of God flowing through you and the evidence of love, grace, and mercy in you, and you're expressing that, you're demonstrating that with other people, right there, that's great riches. That's great favor. And it's found because you have it, the hidden treasure inside of you, which is Holy Spirit God. I'm telling you, it's an amazing thing. Give what you have and you will be blessed. Yes. There's nothing that you don't have. You have it all when you have Christ. That's the whole point that I'm trying to make. But the most glorious treasure is knowing Christ Jesus, your Lord, our Lord and Savior. In comparison to him, everything else is pretty much worthless. Remember, Apostle Paul said, listen, everything I have, everything I could do, everything I know is considered dung, worthless. Compared to knowing Jesus. Compared to Jesus. Amen. Is worthless. Think about it. Everything that you've been chasing for. <clears throat> that you ever wanted. Before Christ. Does it really matter now? <clears throat> All those things and those passions probably went away. You probably wanted to be a multi-millionaire by the time you were 20. And now that you know Christ. you would be like listen. I don't care how long it takes. I still have that passion. I still have that. But if it never happens. I know I have it on the other side. But I know if you're like me, you want it now. I want these millions now because I want millions to give away. There's a need to be met. There's needs to be met all around on the community that I serve, all around my family, all around the nation, all around the country, all around my state. Amen. But I won't get all those things until the time that Jesus wants me to have it because he knows my heart more than I know my heart. Amen. And he doesn't want to give people out like, All types of things like that if we're not ready. Because that very same blessing could be a curse to those who are not ready to receive those type of blessings. Right? It's just the plain facts. It's the truth. I give and want nothing in return. And that attitude of gratitude and the attitude of giving will give you much riches and much prosperity in your life, Sister Lissette. Amen? You're like me. I get to give. I don't give to get. No. No. Yeah, I get 
to give. But I don't use the giving to get. In other words, I don't hoard the giving. Amen. When anybody, anybody could tell you, you sow into his ministry, I'm going to testify probably <laughs> that same day or the next week of what I used that blessing to bless somebody else. It's just the way it is. Amen. There's no need um, to be hoarders of any type of money or anything for the kingdom of God because we're supposed to share the wealth with one another. And we have the Lord. Amen. We need to share Jesus. Amen. God bless you, Carly. Welcome to the Morning Devo. So the most glorious treasure is knowing Christ Jesus, our Lord. In comparison to him, everything else is worthless. Material, material wealth ultimately can't fulfill us. I know that for a fact. Can't fulfill us. I've had uh, a $10,000 month. I think it was a couple of years ago. Made $10,000 in one month. Yeah, Sam. Probably won't know because my wife didn't even know. She didn't realize. I did the calculation. I said, you know, we just made it. I said, we, because we're married. So we made 10000 this month. You know what happened that month? And this was, I believe, a test of the Lord. But I think both cars broke down, something like that. I had to replace the engine, the transmission. I had to do that. all of that. I was able to pay all of that in cash. But at the, when the smoke cleared, I was like, man, that was... That was fast. It was fast. It took like three months to run through that ten grand. When I was like, man, I didn't even have time to reinvest that in the business or anything. I think God did that on purpose. He wanted to see what I'm going to do, and I gave. Um, it was a blessing. It was a time to bless. I just didn't realize it because people online, um, the people I follow online, um, they do that all the time. They make ten thousand dollars a month all the time. To them, it's like. That's a normal thing. To me, it was new. I was like, uh, I never made this type of money in one month in, in ever at that point. Amen. Then on top of that, the following year, this past year, uh, in one month, uh, I want to say, uh, I'll just say I was blessed triple. Amen. In one month. And... I used that for a whole year, pretty much, over a year, to satisfy the needs of my family, friends, ministries, and other, you know, to help. That right there doesn't make sense, because you would think, say, oh, wow, he tripled. Um, my tax guy was like, um, we have an issue here. How did, you know, where did, you know what I mean? Like that. He said, well, we got to allocate this, that. I said, oh, it's okay. So I'm not going to lie and say that that's what happened. What happened is what happened. I believe that 10,000 in one month was a test. Amen. Because I wanted to, I wanted to, woo, I wanted to go vacations and do this, that, and the third, but that would have been just for me. And it's okay to take the family on vacation. We need a vacation. We're overdue for vacation in my family. But there's a lot of, there's a lot of changes. We have little ones now. We have a dog. We have, it's a lot of, planning but amen it's nothing wrong with going on vacation as a matter of fact i applaud those who go on vacations but be careful if you're going on vacation with credit cards um that's not really a vacation that fund that you had it's going to be it's going to make you a slave to the lender so me and my wife think about paying things up front in cash we don't use credit cards at least i don't have it i don't have that one credit card and don't believe the lie that you need a credit card to build credit that's a lie that's false that's, that's a myth amen uh, my credit has been growing just because of, of my, my on-time payments of certain things that I have loans for, and I'm gaining points all the time on my credit, and I don't have not one credit card. So that's a myth. And if you want to talk about that, I have a tax guide that I can connect you with, and also I have um, my brother, Reese Johnson, who does credit repair, and he'll tell you the flat-out truth of a, lot of, of a lot of people don't know this type of truth. Amen. So material wealth ultimately can't fulfill us and certainly does not maintain its value after our physical death. Ooh, that's deep. Doesn't maintain its value after our physical death. We can't take it with us when we die. You're never going to see, you know, the hearse that they take us away with, that our coffin is in. You know, you're never going to see like a trolley behind it or a hearse uh, being dragging a U-Haul truck. All the possessions that we have are staying here. We're not taking anything. We're going to be in heaven well, with a new body, right? Our heavenly bodies. And every treasure that we stored up here, 
Um, I'm thinking we, we're going to be able to take it with us. The treasures that we stored up in heaven are going to be there. Greater treasure. Amen. The wisdom of God, knowing God, knowing Jesus. Amen. That's building up treasure in heaven. That is going is going to be incredible. Amen. But I always ask God, listen, let me let me stay for a little while longer. I need some people in my family to get saved. I really love them and I want to be with them for all eternity. I don't want it just to be a pass through thing and you know. So I'm really desiring to be here for a little longer so that I can preach the gospel. Amen for a little longer. We can't take it with us when we die and we don't need to because actually um, since in the New Jerusalem even the streets will be pure gold, right? So we won't need our gold from this earth. The streets we're going to be walking on, see how worthless or less value gold becomes in heaven. We're going to be walking over it instead of trying to get it, amen? If you see Revelation 21, 21, you'll see what I'm talking about. But the blessings of eternal life and the treasures in heaven Amen. Will last forever. Will last forever. Uh, I think I skipped one. Matthew thirteen forty four. The kingdom of heaven is like a very precious treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid again. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all he has and buys that field, securing the treasure for himself. So this man finds, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ speaking of this, right? The kingdom of heaven is like a very precious treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid again. Because when you find the treasure, man, you'll be like, oh, wow, look at the treasure. I have the Lord now. Uh, let me hide him in my heart. And let me go sell everything I have. Sell the world. You know, give everything back to the world. Amen. I did that when I got saved. I was a music producer for the world. And I gave all my production, all my music to back to the artists of the world. Now, take it. How much? No, I don't want anything for it. Take it. I don't want. I don't want it no more. And then I hid Jesus in my heart. And I didn't sell everything I had, but I dismantled everything that I was using to do music in the world. And I went back to the field of God. Amen. And then He rebuilt the studio for His purpose. And yes, I tried to, you know, as being a producer at that time. I was freshly saved, so forgive me. What I was trying to do, um, I knew a guy that knew a guy that knew every single hack to get all this um, software for music software, for production, for mastering, mixing. I'm talking about thousands and tens of thousands worth of software, but it was all pirated. And I was a young believer. I took it, but then I got convicted right away. I said, how am I using pirated software and pirated equipment to edify God or to praise God. So as a matter of fact, I tried it a little bit and guess what happened? Everything I do use those softwares on crashed. And by the way, the the man that gave me the software, he was a believer too. So we were both wrong, doing wrong. Uh, so I the computers crashed and I was like, listen, I learned my lesson never again. And so I what I did, I whatever everybody was getting free, I will purchase it. Amen. And do it the right way. And since I've done it that way, amen, I can't tell you how many times God blessed me. Amen. For doing that. Philippians chapter 3, uh, verse 7. But whatever former things were gains to me, as I thought then, these things once regarded as advancements in merit, I have come to consider as loss, absolutely worthless for the sake of Christ and the purpose which he has given me in my life. But more than that, it's the Apostle Paul, Philippians chapter 3, I'm in verse 8. But more than that, I count everything as lost compared to the priceless privilege and supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, and growing more deeply and thoroughly acquainted with him, a joy unequaled. For his sake, I have lost everything and I consider it all garbage so that I may gain Christ and may be found in him, believing and relying on him. Not having any righteousness of my own derived from my obedience to the law and its rituals, but possessing that genuine righteousness which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith. It's amazing. Apostle Paul said, Listen, I know some things, but compared to knowing Jesus, it's all worthless. So that's the point of the whole thing. The worth of knowing Jesus. 
is a hidden treasure in our lives. And I know we know so many people that could care less. They're going for this money. They're going for this money. I know people that do 40, 50, 60 hours at work um, trying to get these overtime hours, trying to get this money. And they, they think that's a form of wealth. I think it's a form of slavery. You can't pay me. Um, and I've done it. And no, I'm not saying that work for somebody else is working hard is anything wrong. I'm just saying I've done it. And I realized in my life, I was under the way I thought of it. Me, Sam, the way I thought of it was like some kind of slavery. Some kind of bait that they put in front of you. Say, hey, if you work X amount of hours, we'll give you X amount of pay. Um, thank you, Jesus, that you woke me up, shook me up. He's been telling me for years and years and years before I took the step to be entrepreneur, recruiter, and health wellness coach, independent this, independent that, business owner and all that, online marketer, uh, all that, media marketer, all that. He's been telling me that for years. He said, let go of that in my life. He said, let go of that bondage. This was his word. And let go of that bondage and come to the freedom. Amen. And I, it took time for me. I heard the word, but it took time for me. It took my courage to, <laughs> I had to gain courage to let go of all of it. Because you're so used to consistency, right? you used to every Friday getting paid or whatever you get paid. Some people were weekly, bi-weekly. But I found in my experience, my experience, I'm not talking about anybody else's experience unless you want to share. But in my experience, it wasn't worth it. Why? Because I was giving them my back. I was starting to ache with pain. Um, I had no life. I would literally go from work sometimes when there was a night of service and I had to be at church serving the Lord. Amen. Um, in the media team, uh, I was coming with my uniform still on. I had no time to think. It was like, wow. I was like, man, all these hours. And then if, they, if you did something wrong in those type of corporations, those companies, all those hours would not matter if you made one mistake. They would delete all the all the hard times and the hard hours you put and the hard work you put into it, it could all go away by losing one customer. And I experienced that. You go from hero to zero real fast in those type of situations. So with the courage, I decided to say, listen, I'm going to leave that all behind. Detach from it and follow what God has for my life. Amen. And I've been doing that ever since. You know, have I screwed up in it? Of course. I'm trying to do stuff my way. And God's already instructed me how to do it. And I'm trying to reinvent the wheel. I, try, I do that a lot. I've slowed down with that a lot also as well. I learned a lot. And I know not what, to, what not to do. Amen. In some situations. That's where I'm at right now. Amen. Oh, where's that? Are you uh, struggling with... Carly, are you struggling with uh, trying to let go of what you're doing now and let God and follow God to do what he has told you to do? Or where where is it that you are right now, Carly? Amen. Because I know it's it wasn't easy. It took me 12 years behind the word um, to get the courage to let it go. Because when I got my last opportunity to work for a big corporation, amen, um, that's number one, I believe, still in their, in their field. Uh, I got that job unusually. Even the people I... Every time I would say, they would say, who hired you? How'd you get hired? I would say, I made a phone call. And they would look at me like, I made a phone call? You don't get hired in this company by calling nobody. But that's how I got the job. I literally called up a number on the back of a, a truck that I saw that had that emblem. And then they interviewed me right on the spot. And even the lady that was interviewing said, wow, this is unusual. We normally don't do this, but um, you, I think well, you'll be a good fit for this position so I put the phone down. So that that was too easy. Something is not right here. Put the phone down and I did a shotgun prayer. A shotgun prayer is like, okay, God, if this is from you, you will let it happen. If it's not from you, you know, it won't happen. That's not, I think that's a shotgun, but that's a desperate prayer. Um, you already know. I already knew what the Lord told me. Amen. And I had expressed what God had said uh, to me. And she was concerned about bills and all that. Because for some reason, somehow, we have this thinking that if when you go full-time ministry that you're going to be broke and underprivileged and all that. I don't know where that came from, but that's certainly not true. I could tell you that for a fact that's not true. But somehow that crept into the mindset of believers, crept into the church 
oh yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm in ministry, so you know, uh, I don't have. I'm like, are you kidding me? You go into ministry for the Lord Jesus, you have it all. You just haven't seen it yet. You just haven't found the hidden treasure. Get into His Word, and you'll find what I'm talking about. Amen. Carly says, I can feel the Lord trying to show me to let go and trust in him more. Right now I am home with the kids. I need to be able to support them, but I don't want to pay someone what I make to raise them. That's 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 tough. That's tough. That's the situation. Um, and a lot, you're not alone, Carly. A lot of people are facing that right now. Amen. But uh, we have a hidden treasure in us, and God will show you just like he showed me what to do to support, to be able to support your family and to raise them. I, I put up a post a couple of years ago. I took a picture of my daughter. She was home with us and I'm home. That was, I'm home watching my daughters grow and my wife is home. My wife's been home for years before that because I told my wife, okay, don't worry about working. I'll take care of it. And I literally did. And uh, I mean, she went back to work eventually because she loves to be working. And now she's thriving in uh, Mary Kay. And um, we're able to be home and watch our kids. To me, that's more of a blessing than going for a 40, 60 hour job. So I, I've been there. I, I feel your the tension that you're feeling because I'm like, wow, I've been there. And it's a so real situation that when you make the decision, though, I, I can guarantee you make the decision to do what God said to do. Amen. In your situation, he will make sure that everything will be taken care of. Amen. Um, look, see, see, Carly Lissette says she's on the same boat. Carly says I was working 12 hour shifts as a nurse. I left to go to eight hours, but then I got COVID. My son had it too. Haven't gone back yet. I have money saved. I'm trying to trust him to guide me. Amen. Uh, a resource, Carly, that I'm going to send you a link. I'm going to inbox you a resource that I think will help you in this situation. Amen. Uh, I'm going to send you two resources. Amen. In your inbox. And feel free uh, to um, go over those resources. I believe that these resources could help you in your situation. Amen. Because um, we all have to work. There's nothing wrong with working. Um, although I'm an online marketer and I'm independent, this I'm a business owner, I own my radio network, still have to work it. I, I wish I could just go like this, and you know, and not do nothing, and then money flies out of the sky. But it's not true. Amen. You have to work, but when God is working with you, alongside of you, and giving you ways, Amen. Because I'm figuring this for a four-hour workday, if I make an eight-hour wage, I'm rich. And I'm I'm advanced, um, but if I'm working sixteen hours for a four hour pay, then something's wrong. You know what I mean? So that's the way I look at it. But I'm a man, so I think I think differently. Um, and it says that, but God does open doors. Just trust, believe. God will never leave us. Yes, He never fails us either. Amen. So Carly, uh, expect that in your inbox. Hopefully, you have Messenger. Um, then I'll put that in your inbox. And these are these are real resources. And the other one's going to be a real person that you may w- want to connect with and then um, take it from there. You know, we're here to help one another. And nobody has to know um, your, you know, your um, private details. It's just, you know, overall. And I believe the kingdom, we can help one another in all those ways. Because I'm, I'm, I was right there with you. I was never home. I was working 12 hours. And just that in the third, I'm never home. Came home cranky, angry, upset, smelly. It was tough. But um, God showed me I didn't have to do that no more. God does supply all our needs. He makes ways for us. Trust him. Yes. Yes. And I know, I know Carly, that uh, it's easier said than done. I'm telling you, I know that. I'll be the first to admit it. But it's something about letting the things that we used to go and trusting in God. Now, I would tell you right now, and this I believe I got from the Lord a long time ago, never leave something for nothing. If you don't have nothing in place, or maybe you might have to do something on the side to get to the place where you want to be. So what I did, I did Uber and Lyft, the driving services, until the until it matched. I was doing it on the side part-time until it matched my salary. But it didn't only match, it exceeded my salary. And I kept on telling my wife, she, was, she thought it was, ah, oh, that's just a fluke. It's not going to work all the time. And consistently, I would show her the numbers every time. 
part time, I was making more money than I was doing full time. I was so angry. People said, "Why were you angry?" I said, "Because I said I could have been doing this for years ago." I said, "Why was not I not thinking of this before?" It's because I didn't have courage to make the change because I was so used to the same. So I started seeing the numbers of doing Uber and Lyft increase, increase, increase over my salary week, and then. It just gave gave me the courage. I had planned everything out. I mapped the whole Lehigh Valley out, where the hot spots are uh, to pick people up, where the um you know the cold spots are, where nobody's really around. And I mapped it out. I was put myself in my car in those areas and keep on increasing, increasing. So part time, I was making more than my full time job. So then it gave me enough courage to actually leave with a plan. So I left something. I left something for something greater, and from that something greater. Uber and Lyft, you meet so many different people. I connected with so many different people, amazing people, uh, people that needed um, the gospel. It was just incredible. Now I do it when I want to do it. Uber and Lyft only do it when they give bonuses. Like they're giving a nice bonus this weekend, and I'm going to do it um, just to get the bonus. Uh, and when I get the bonus, it'll be uh, like working a two day job, you're getting it in like three, four hours. That amount of money. It's amazing. So I hope you're blessed. I hope um, I made my point. I know I talk a lot. Revelation 21, read it. Revelation 21, I don't have time to read it, but Revelation 21, read it starting from verse 15 all the way um, to the end. And you will know what I'm talking about, the streets of gold, what I mentioned earlier. Amen. So it's so worth knowing Jesus. Amen. The treasure is in the Lord. It's hidden treasure, but it's in him. And he revealed himself. To every single believer who believes and trusts in the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'll be praying for all of you, your situations. Continue to pray for me and my family. I'll pray for you and your family. And let's all prosper together. Amen. We won't have nothing to boast about. Uh, we will only boast about what God has done in our lives. Amen. And you're welcome, Sister Lissette. Carly, uh, I'll be sending you some things in your inbox. And God bless you all. God keep you all. Remember that God is good. And He's amazing at everything he does. Peace.